Hello everyone and welcome to another exhibit speed build for Jurassic World Evolution 2. This time an aviary with the brand new Sungripterus, Dimorphodon, Topajara and Gallimimus, but without the use of mods. There is a very easy way to get the Gallimimus into any aviary without the need for mods. Simply put a hatchery as close to the aviary as possible and release a full clutch of Gallimimus. Some of them come sprinting out of the hatchery and while doing this animation, they can walk through fences and the aviary wall. Just round up the stragglers and sell them or put them in another exhibit. I saw this trick done by 29 Raptors and I wanted to share it with you guys so you can try it out for your next aviary build. I've also linked 29 Raptors channel below if you want to check that out. There's a lot of uh, like game breaking testing kind of uh, short videos there. So I've built this huge aviary that surrounds an open space and that space in and of itself is is an exhibit as well. You can see Iguanodon walking around in there simply because I had the slight hope that the Iguanodon could also go into to the aviary because they also come out with uh, with a bit of a sprint when they release from the hatchery but unfortunately they stopped just short of the uh, of the aviary wall but yeah there's a, there's a, an exhibit within an exhibit essentially and then a giant tour going through the aviary going through the inner exhibit and i also added an extra exhibit at the back of the aviary simply because of the location of the uh, of where i put the aviary on the specific map and the idea here is that it's just this huge main attraction in the park. Uh, it's 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 a massive tour, so it's something that when you when you come to visit this park, you have to you have to take this tour essentially. And because it's such an important part of the park, you know, in in my head canon, I always like to come up with little backstories behind. Uh, behind a given exhibit or behind a given park and for this one because it's such a main attraction for this park instead of just doing a regular path leading up to the tour building I did a bit of a queue also just the perfect excuse to use more of the decorative pieces but I also think it it makes sense, you know, when you go to any theme park, big attractions, any attractions really, they always have a queue leading up to it because a lot of people are going to be wanting to go on this ride. So you're going to have to wait a little bit in line. So that's why I did that. I think it adds... I think it adds some realism, essentially. Um, and it's it's something that, you know, I did in this park for this exhibit as an example. But obviously you can do this for, for any tour in any park that you're building. And I really like it. I really think that this adds a sort of extra illusion of it being a real place. I mean, when you see a line, it, it evokes sort of, uh, yeah, I've been here type of feelings. So, uh... Apart from, uh, you know, when you first come up to the queue, I also wanted to add a little bit of a guest section. Uh, I want to do that for all of these exhibit speed builds. So before we actually get to the exhibit itself, I want to build the little guest section that goes in front of it. So there's a big restaurant, a medium drink shop, and a small um, uh, souvenir shop, I guess. Uh, and then a little bit of a public square situation. Uh, and paths that lead further into the park and again like I said in one of the earlier speed builds you should see building a park I mean I hope that that helps if you see building a park as sort of like a game of Tetris just start somewhere and uh, see what kind of shape you end up with and then see what you can build on top of that to fill in uh, the space that you have left yourself with so placing a lot of uh, um, the uh, the seating areas with parasols. Question for you guys. Do you guys ever use the tables and chairs without the parasols open? Because I never do. I mean, I guess I like that we have the option. But it just looks way more cheery and um, operational. And we're in business to have the parasols open. So I never actually use the ones that are closed. Uh, here I'm placing lights in front of the fence. Um, exactly where the like the support struts of the concrete are. Just to make sure that they're, uh, that they're even. And that way it also looks a bit more purposeful. And by having a backdrop behind the lights. Uh, the effect of the lights is a little bit more grandiose. You could say in... Uh, in the nighttime. The lights unfortunately aren't very bright. They don't really have much shine to them. But by placing them that close to the fence. They do shine on the wall a little bit. And uh, it creates a nice effect. More lights. Because you can never go wrong with more lights. Again more tables and seating areas. Because uh, 
Well, you can never go wrong with that. People are lazy. And now we're finally getting to the actual exhibit build. Um, what I've started with is... Uh, and I will say that I think about this sort of stuff as I'm laying down the tour track. So I knew that for this part of the uh, of the aviary, I wanted to raise the terrain up a little bit and give um, one part of the tour an elevated view of an earlier part of the tour. And uh, I also like that by elevating the gyrospheres within the aviary, especially for this type of aviary, this type of aviary has a really low concrete barrier. So by raising the terrain up just a little bit, uh, I say just a little bit, this is the maximum that you can raise the terrain within the aviary. But by raising it up by that amount, you can actually look through the metal grates from inside the aviary. So when you're driving in the gyrosphere in the aviary, you can already peek outside at the Iguanon exhibit. Here I'm adding like a uh, galley valley. <laughs> they all came running through here. Um, so what I did is I raised the terrain on either side and it creates this uh, a little bit of a valley. I could have lowered the ground as well, uh, but I wanted to keep it uh, like a flat and open area. And what I really like about Jurassic World Evolution 2 in particular is that exhibits just from where you've built them, they already look so different. If you're going to build this exact same aviary in any of the other biomes, it's going to look drastically different. And that what that's... It makes it really exciting. Uh, so exciting that I can't speak right now. Uh, but just imagine that basically if you come up with a design for something, you can repeat it however many biomes we have in the game. I think it's... Um, you can just repeat it and it, it's going to look different every single time. So, you know, if you're ever stuck in a rut and you don't know quite what to do, I feel like you could just cheat a little bit and repeat one of your earlier designs and it's, it's just going to come out looking very, very, very different. Um... Again, just playing around with rocks. I think we all know what my favorite rock is. It's the it's the pointy rock. I really hope that they're going to add some more stuff to the game. I mean, I appreciate the extra creatures that we got last week. Um, I really, really, really do. But I, I personally would prefer more tools to work with as opposed to more dinosaurs to work with. No disrespect, especially towards the Kronosaurus. I love the Kronosaurus. It's actually quite cute to me. But I think that more creatures wasn't necessarily what the game needs. What the game needs is more decorations. Uh, the game needs its individually placeable trees back. You know, so I really hope that they get around to doing that very, very soon. And this is just, uh, we're looking at some ending shots of the park itself. I love the rock perches that have become available uh, for the flying reptiles in the update. Looks really nice, makes it way more natural than the trick we've been using before. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I hope that, that this gives you some inspiration for your future aviary build with, uh, with the new flying creature that we have in the game. I really like being able to add the Gallimimus to this aviary just creates um literally it creates an extra dimension because you have creatures uh walking on the ground as well as flying around i think it makes uh, for a much more exciting experience and i think it's really cool that we can do that without mods i personally won't be modding my game at least for a little while i don't know how long i can hold out because uh pretty much everyone is already modding but for now this is 100 without mods so you can do this exact same thing on console as well and yeah what i hope that these speed builds do for you is that they give you plenty of inspiration for your own builds you know mix and match my ideas uh, put your own spin on stuff of course and uh, have fun with park building all right i want to thank you so much for watching liking subscribing and until next time enjoy the game mm -hmm.